So um, I appreciate you guys showing up. We're going to be talking about engineer to order and PDM. Um, just as a little bit of background, if I don't happen to uh, know you guys, my name is Ryan Cole. I am a, an elite senior application engineer uh, here at Go Engineer, and um, primary job is to go out and talk to customers. Um, yeah, I, I'm supposed to get customers to come to us, and I'm supposed to support customers that are out there and get them to be better and bigger and badder and all that good stuff uh, in staying within the SOLIDWORKS family there. A um, little bit of background on myself. I've been with the software since 1995 and uh, have been worked, I've worked in a couple of different industries, uh, one of them being uh, custom chassis for RB and the other one being uh, doing automated machine for the plastics industry over in uh, by Detroit, uh, Michigan there. So one of the things that I want to kind of bring is that experience that I had and why PDM actually helped us in those particular jobs and uh, kind of make it a little bit clear uh, to what's going on here. So. So once again, I uh, appreciate you guys coming on. Um, if there's any questions, there is a question and answer dialogue that's uh, that's available to you guys. Um, I probably won't get to the questions till the end of the presentation, only because uh, uh, it makes it awkward when I stop talking and start typing and all that good stuff. So uh, definitely throw your questions in there. If I don't answer them right away, I will get to you. And it, regardless if I get to you or not, I will get a report uh, with the questions in your email. And so make sure your email is correct, and I can always answer that back a little bit later. So let's go ahead and get going here. We've got the engineer to order in PDM. Um, basically, uh, a couple different things here. So uh, custom designs has many of its own unique challenges. Um, it, 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 one thing that I, I kind of run into is, is I'll get a call from a customer that is doing custom design. They're either doing automated machinery, they're doing custom you know, engineering, whatever it may be. And they don't kind of follow the, you know, the, the same rigmarole that some engineering firms do, the ECRs and ECOs and change requests and change orders and stuff like that. And the issue that we have is that they'll call up, ask us about information, but then, um, you know, it, when we say, well, PDM would be the answer, they say, well, no, I, we don't think PDM is the answer. And usually that's because of the way that it's being uh, advertised to the masses out there. And uh, so usually we have to have a sit down. We talk about particular things that are going on. Uh, we talk about like why they don't think it works for them. And then we kind of talk them back into uh, the reason why it would help them and, and give them very specific points. And some of these points that, you know, that we give them is what I want to go over here with you guys as well, too, and maybe open up some dialogue or maybe get you guys to look at something you've never looked at previously. Uh, the big thing is, is uh, kind of like how I started here with the uh, experience level is, you know, I, we, we kind of know what you guys are doing and what you're running into. So, you know, it's not something that you have to explain to us and we're coming up with an out of, the, you know, like some solution that's not out of the box. Uh, we are literally talking about an out of the box solution and the getting it to work for you guys specifically. So that's kind of what I want to cover there as we go through this. Um, Main thing, though, is that, you know, there are customers out there that are um, in the engineered order. They are doing custom design and stuff like that. And so we went out and uh, we talked to one of them. We said, hey, can we get a quote for you? You know, just to show other people in the same industry that PDM is being used. So we have this uh, this uh, quote from Dale Slotman. He's a mechanical engineer lead at Coop's Automation System. And basically he said, as a custom machine builder, every project that comes into Coop's is different. SOLIDWORKS PDM allows us to reuse previous designs or portions of previous designs easily without the risk of inadvertently changing legacy data. On large projects, PDM allows clean, efficient collaboration. Before PDM, revision tracking was a nightmare. With PDM, it's, a seamless, it's seamless and intuitive. Potentially, the biggest thing that PDM has changed for Coops is the ability to work on files stored on a local machine while still working in a collaborative environment. This has been especially beneficial for us during the time in COVID remote work for our entire design team was able to work safely from home while still working together this would have been a major struggle with pdm but with pdm the SOLIDWORKS side of things was taken care of we are a much more flexible team because of pdm and i would recommend pdm for teams of any size and just to kind of clarify that um he wasn't coerced to do that we basically called him up and said hey we're going to be doing 
PDM for your guys' industry. Could you give us a quote on why PDM is working for you? And um, I, I got to say, I was I was uh, unduly impressed with all the information because I was like, wow, he said everything that I'm going to kind of cover here. And he didn't realize what we were going to be talking about. He literally was told, hey, give us a quote on how PDMs helped your, you and your industry. So, um, you know, hopefully this kind of helps out there. This isn't something that we are, you know, oh, we're going to sell more software to this industry and stuff like that. That's not our goal here. The goal is really to help you guys out and, uh, you know, make sure that you guys are being taken care of and make life easy and stuff like that. So some of the things I want to kind of cover with you guys, and this is going to be, you know, specific to the industry, but these are usually the big heavy hitters that we have out there. Uh, Multi-user environments and networks. Uh, we're going to talk about workflows, which is usually where uh, communications will shut down, uh, especially when we're talking about PDM. Uh, but I want to reopen that and, and kind of put a different spin on it. And then finally, we have file management um, as well, too. And, and like I said, we'll cover all these. And uh, I am going to jump into PDM. I'm going to jump into SOLIDWORKS a little bit. I do want to show you a little bit of the functionality as far as, you know, not demonstrating the functionality, but how the flow would work for someone in an industry like engineer to order. Multi-user environments um, and networks, all right? Uh, you know, you know, I kind of put get out of the game there because really that's kind of what it ends up being, especially if you've got multi-user environments working on a larger job. You've got one or two guys, well, you got two or three guys. Maybe you have more people. And one of the things that we run into is the uh, first in wins uh, case. And the first in wins basically comes down to this, is that whoever opens the main assembly first gets control of all the parts and sub-assemblies underneath. And then if you are working in a collaborative team, you've got other people trying to get into those documents, but they can't get into them to, for write access because the person had already opened them. So then it gets into the, you know, hey, can you close the assembly down so I can open up this part? That person's got to save their assembly. They've got to close out. The other person opens up what they need to work on. Then they can reopen the assembly. They don't have right access to the other part now, but that's okay. But like I said, it's this big game. If you got more than two people doing that, it's way too many people doing that. So um, there's some other ways that you can do it as well, too. You can right-click on a file and say, re, you know, reload as read-only. Uh, but either way, there's a whole bunch of steps involved, and it is a big uh, screeching halt to the productivity that's going on. So, you know, that's one of the things that uh, kind of gets in with the PDM is the fact that you can check files in and check files out. Just because you open the file doesn't mean you own the file. And that's really where it comes in, uh, you know, for the, the benefit benefit of a multi-user environment. So it gets you out of the close and reopen a game. And then one of the other big things that comes in is the fact that you are working locally. Uh, the number of times that we've had customers working on large assemblies, they get corrupt files, they have shutdowns, they have crashes, they talk to us. One of our first questions from a support side is, are you working on a network? And if the answer is yes, then what we do is to test to see if the network is the issue is we'll have them copy all the files, put them on their local drive, and then work on that. And that's pretty disruptive. If you're working in a multi-user environment, it's almost impossible. Um, if anything, it's a big headache because you got to copy everything over and then you got to put it on your local drive and then you got to work on it. But what we find in a lot of cases, not all of them, but in a lot of cases, we find out that when they do move that all that data locally, their crashing goes away, their corruptions go away. And that's because PDM will handle uh, working locally versus working the server. When you're working on a file, it's pushing that information to your local computer now you're running without any communication lag. You're running off your hard drive. Things are fast. Things are quicker. Things are a little bit more stable. So that's one of the things that we're going to talk about here. So let me jump into PDM here real quick. And we've got an assembly here. So, you know, I've got the main assembly. And, you know, the idea here is that we are... Uh, checking out SolidWorks or we're checking files out because we need to work on them. And that's kind of nice because if I need to open the large assembly up or if I need to open the main assembly up, one of the things I don't have to do or worry about is the fact that when I double click on it, I am now taking control of everything. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to just simply come in and I check out the file because I want to work at this larger level. So at this point, it's going to pop up. It's going to say, hey, what do you want to take control of? Well, I only need the main assembly, maybe the drawing or something like that, but I'm just going to go ahead and check that out. So one of the other things that we come in to play with here, though, is the fact that 
we can communicate with people. Uh, one of the biggest things is, is you know, who who has what file, who's on first, what's on second, all that good stuff. And if I take a look here, as soon as I check it out, and I am the admin, but as soon as I check it out, you can see that it says who's it's checked out by. So if I were coming in here and saying, hey, I need to get to this large, you know, this main assembly here, and when I go ahead and click on it, before I even click on it, I can see exactly who's got it. Um, at that point, I can call them up. I can see what's going on. Uh, I can see how many files they may have checked out. I can see all kinds of information here. And once again, I, I kind of talk about PDM as kind of a communication tool. Uh, instead of yelling out to the general populace that works around you, hey, who's got this file checked out? Or running around talking to a bunch of people. The information is right here. You know who to talk to right away, directly. Uh, even to some points uh, with the PDM, if it's set up correctly, being able to send them an email just from right here. Hey, by the way, I need to get into this when you're going to be done with it. And you can kind of move on from there. So now that I have it checked out, I can go ahead and open this. And I'm just going to go ahead and double click on it here. And uh, with that being said, let's yeah, there we go. We're going to try to do this live. So I got a 1500 piece assembly. Let's see how long it takes to open it in front of a whole bunch of people. Um, but while this is opening, you know, th the idea here is that typically if I was not running a PDM system at this point of opening, I would have taken control of everything at that time. And so, you know, we're kind of waiting <coughs> for this to happen here. And, you know, I can start thinking about what I need to work on. So maybe it's the uh, the table down here. And I can see that it's got the robot controller. And then I've got the little table that's holding it up. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I didn't check out those files. Well, that's kind of the benefit as well, too, especially if you're in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is that you don't have to close out anything. You don't have to get into anything. You don't have to switch programs. You can kind of do everything right inside of SOLIDWORKS. And that's the benefit of the PDM system. Um, we do have an environment for PDM. You can see that on the right hand side. That'll populate once the files open here. And uh, we'll go ahead and let that finish out opening. And you'll see it populate um, on that right hand side. And the cool part is, is this is kind of a communication table as well too. If someone checks another part out and then they make a change and then they check that part back into the system, I'm actually going to see uh, an icon appear for me to say, hey, this has been changed. Do you want to update it? Do you want to load it and do all that stuff? So this is kind of what we're taking a look at here. And we can see that there's some basic information going on here. This is still trying to finish opening here. Um, but, you know, it, it should be right here. In, in whatever you need to touch, whatever you need to work on is going to be right in your face. There's, Like I said, there's no reason to get in or out or anything into a different program or anything like that. So we'll give this just a few more seconds. Let's see, what else can we do here? <laughs> now, while that's opening up in the background, let's look and take a look at the data cards. Um, my data cards may not be filled out, but it is grabbing some kind of basic information that's going on through here. And anything that you guys are capturing for, say, your drawings, your title blocks, any of the file properties, um, we're going to map those properties to these data cards. And the benefit of the data card, just to kind of give you guys an understanding, it comes down to searches. Um, when I come in here, I can do some searches depending on the file name. I can do a search depending on the description or any information that I have here. Here. The other thing that I kind of want to point out to you guys, especially if you're unfamiliar with the PDM system, is the fact that the data card here is um, customizable. This is not what you guys will have. In fact, if I saw this, if someone was using this data card out in the wild and I saw them using it, I'd have a whole bunch of questions like, who did the install for you? And, you know, what kind of information do you usually catch? Like, you know, this is kind of important information that we have. And the problem is, is we usually have to open the drawing to see the information to be able to to gather that information. Well, the nice part about the PDM system with it being a database system is the fact that any of the information that's being captured in the data card is also being captured by the database in the background. So if you've ever done like a window search, those are usually long and tedious. If you don't know what's going on, you have to be based on specifically, uh, you know, specifically it's based on what is uh, a, a character in the file name itself. And you may not know that. The other issues that we run into is sometimes we are dealing with configuration 
configurations. And if you're dealing with configurations, the PDM system makes a lot of sense because when I do a search, it's not just searching the file, but it's searching the configuration information as well too. And configurations can have their own data card here. So kind of keep that in mind, especially if you're using configurations and you do a lot of searches. Um, for number one, if you do a window search, it's going to take a long time. If you do the search inside a PDM, it is a SQL database search. So it's a lot quicker. Um, so definitely keep that in mind if you happen to be doing a lot of searches. All right, so now that this is all opened up, we've got our assembly here. And, uh, you know, I wanted to work on this particular component. So let me go ahead and pick that component. Let's see, do I want that? Nope, I want the sub component here. Go ahead and uh, we'll open that up. All right, we're going to rebuild the document. So we're just going to kind of bear, burr our way down here. So I am going to open the first level sub here going on. And uh, it's saying that I'm going to make changes to the read-only document, and then I'm going to hit the don't show me again, and then I'm going to wonder why it never asked me that again. But that's a whole other presentation that we'll get into. Now, we can see up here that it is read-only, and that's because I have not checked the file out. Um, and this is one of the things that I want to kind of show you. A lot of times, there's a, a when it comes into PDM, I, I hear excuses, and we're going to get to more of the excuses here in a little bit. But some one of the excuses is, you know, well, we do things so quickly, we don't have time to go back and forth and do this and do that and it's just you know you know whatever's going on so usually it's a it's a workload why pdm is not a good fit so in a case like this though um, if i need to start working on this uh, the only way that i can check it, to work on it is i'd have to check it out so i, I do want you to kind of notice even though i didn't have control of the file i still have the ability to open files up zoom in zoom out look at them i can even make some light changes but it's still a read only file up there so in order for me to get access to this I'm going to right click on the name of the file I'm going to right click on it and then go down to SOLIDWORKS PDM and I'm going to say check out so at this time it's going to go through and it's going to go hey what do you want to check out and I'm like yep you know what I need that and uh, we'll check that out and that's all that's required for it we can see up here that this is now ready to be you know saved changed whatever um, but I am going to keep on burrowing down here a little bit so I'm going to pick the top of the table We'll grab the table now, we'll open that up, and we're gonna run into the same problem here. Um, I did not check the file out, so it is gonna be read-only. And maybe if I was thinking a little bit ahead of myself, when that last list came up, I could have come through and uh, said, oh no, I, I, need the, you know, I need that other part as well too here. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna right click on the name here, because I need to get control of this. We're gonna go ahead and say check out. And then once that pops up, we're going to do one thing here, which is the 367, if I'm uh, 7085, there we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab these, the drawing for this subassembly. I'm going to grab the drawing for the leg that I need to fix, and I'm going to grab the drawing for the leg as well too. So I'm just going to check all those files out at one time. Now let's kind of take a look back in Windows and see what's going on here. And what you'll see is um, basically as I scroll through here, we can see that I have taken control of some of these files. Basically what it really comes down to is any of these other files are completely free to be checked out by other people and then have them make the changes. Basically it comes down to the fact is I don't have to say, hey, I need to work on this piece. Can you save your assembly close out of it so I can open this up so I have right access? That goes out the window at that time. So let's go ahead and make a quick change here. Um, I'm going to open this file up here. So I'm just going to click on it and we'll just do a small slight change, something that you know goes through and is pretty quick here. So I'll go ahead and change the length of this. We're going to take it from 11 inches in height and let's go ahead and, and we'll make it pretty tall here. We'll do 21 inches. So we do our update. Um, I might want to look at the drawings as well, too. So if I make a drawing from this part, SOLIDWORKS is going to go, hey, you already have a drawing. Is this what you want to do? We'll say, yep, sounds good. So we'll give that a sec to open up here. And remember, I had already checked these parts out or these files out. So I'm instantaneously getting in and having access to what I need to, to change here. So we'll go ahead and make some slight adjustments. We'll save that out. We'll notice that the rev level is not in here. And that's because it hasn't been processed through yet. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely talk about that rev level here in a sec. But we'll go ahead and close that out. We'll close this out. 
and then we will get to that first sub-assembly here. So it definitely looks a little bit taller. Let's go ahead and update this drawing as well too. This is where one of the changes took place. So let's open that, that file. And once again, this is things that I'd have to do in real life. This is not something I have to do in the PDM system, but the nice thing is the PDM system is tracking what has changed. And that's really the benefit of it. So what I'm going through here is what a normal user would have had to go through as well too. Um, it's just the fact that I've got a little bit more uh, control going on here. Plus there's a little bit more information that's actually being captured in the background. So, you know, I, you know, I got to make some slight changes here. We'll go ahead and grab that part. We'll move it up here. There we go. And then I will save that out. Now, once again, the revision down here set to zero at this point in time. There's no revision in there. And once again, that's because I haven't finished this at this point here. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, hit save. We'll wait for that to save out. And then we can close this out. So, you know, talking about doing a design change, I mean, I started with the top level assembly, went through and uh, just opened up the files. Yes, I did add in a couple of mouse clicks, but that's all I added to the whole mix there was just a couple of mouse clicks. So go ahead and close that out. That looks good. We're saving changes as we go. And I can say at this time, you know what, I'm all done. That was the last little bit of change that I had to do. And so we'll go ahead and finish that out by closing out the assembly. Everything looked good. So the whole who's in first and, and you know, who has the control of it and all that stuff, um, that kind of goes out the window. I, I know one of the places I worked, I actually had a person that would come in. He usually came in about 5.30 in the morning, way before anybody else did. And he would open his main assembly every time, even though there were six other people working with him on the project. And then he would literally open it up without a PDM system, take control of all the files, and then he would minimize SOLIDWORKS down, you know, down, and then open up a brand new SOLIDWORKS. His whole goal was to only grab all the files that he was working on and make sure that no one else could touch them. Well, basically, that's what I would call a poor man's PDM system. The PDM is now controlling that. If someone wants to make a change, they're going to have to check it out. They're going to have to check it in. And one thing to note, and this is what I tell a lot of people, especially if they're unfamiliar with it, is... Um, you know, everything you do is being tracked in the system. You can look at a history. You can see who changed what, when they changed it. Um, I can I can count on uh, both my hands and run out of fingers the number of times that I've had to go around saying, hey, did, did somebody touch this part? Did someone open it? Did someone make an adjustment to it? And it's amazing how everybody in the company never even saw the part before. Nope, nope, never touched it. Never seen it. Nope, nope, no one. Well, someone did, you know. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is because you have to check the part out, make the change, and check it back in, that check process is going to update the history and it's going to say that Ryan Cole on February 4th at 3 a.m. opened the part up, checked it in. If I didn't put comments in there, shame on me, but that's kind of how it goes. So if anything, the who's on first doesn't become a who's on first. Now you know that Ryan's on first, uh, Mike is on second, John is on third, and all that good stuff. And you know exactly who's doing what, where they're at, what they're doing, and everything at all times. So, um, you know, even from not just a user, you know, level, but from a management level, the information is available to you. So, you know, definitely if you're trying to figure out how to win the game, PDM will help you win that game. All right, excuse me, guys. So workflows. Um, this is usually when talks start to break down, especially when you go in. And uh, when I go in and talk to uh, anybody who's doing... Um, you know, engineering to order uh, or custom machines or custom, you know, type things. Uh, a lot of these industries are very, very fast. Uh, they will fly through. Uh, there's no time to breathe. We barely have time to stop working, go home, eat a dinner, come back and work. And, you know, it's just go, 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 go. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we will sometimes get around uh, with engineer to order is the fact that we don't do revisions. So, um, it's a common thing. Well, you know, well, we don't think PDM is going to be workful useful for us because we don't do revisions. That's literally the argument that we get from the customer base. Uh, the fact of the matter is I, I know you don't do revisions. I, I get it. Um, but things to keep in mind is when we start getting into workflows, it's not just revisions. Um, I, I put C. CYA there, and uh, it means cover your 
posterior end, uh, only because I'm supposed to keep this uh, rated G. So um, the organizations and the tracking, um, you know, you may not follow an engineering process, but I will guarantee in most places there is a process, even if, if it's a, you know, we take our drawing and we give it to Vern in the corner and he looks it over real quick because he's been doing this for 40 years. Well, Ver Vern is now part of the organization, part of the process. That information has to get to the customer. The information has to get to the floor. If you have quality, if you have machining involved, there is some sort of process going on. Uh, rarely do we open up SOLIDWORKS, start a new part, make a part, save it, and then close it out and nothing ever happens to it, right? We do things for a reason. Um, the other thing is this tracking as, as well too. Uh, where is the part at? What's going on with it? Who has it? Well, you know, and, and stuff like that. So we'll show you some of that stuff, how it works out. And then uh, some of the things I want to hit upon just a little bit here is, um, you, know, uh, you know, we don't have time. Like I don't have time to do that. In fact, I've had one customer come back and they said that over a year's worth of time, there was going to be three hours and 50 minutes worth the button clicking that would be added to the department due to the PDM system coming in. Um, so it, it was uh, it was quite amazing, uh, especially because the, the whole conversation started out with the fact that they had lost almost a hundred thousand dollars worth of data the year before, and PDM would have uh, would have made that not happen. So they're talking about three hours. If you even add a hundred dollars an hour for engineering time, they're talking about a three hundred dollars savings uh, versus the hundred thousand uh, dollars. Uh, that they lost the year before. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, keep things in perspective of a bigger picture, not just like, oh man, I'm going to have to right click more often. <laughs> so um, one of the other things though, is that we can add in some automation to this whole uh, deal as well too. So um, let's go back here. Oops. There we go. Um, so I talked about the revisions and stuff in there. Now, you know, one thing that I do like about the PDM system is you get the guys on the floor integrated with the PDM system. And not only do they have data cards, but they've got a preview capability in here as well, too. So when I take a look at that table, I can see exactly what it looks like. If I want to take a look at even the large assembly here, it's going to load that data up for me. And they're going to be able to not just see a little static image of it, but be able to see a live 3D file on the screen. In fact, I have a couple of customers that use this for the manufacturers on the floor where they can come in and they don't look at a drawing. They actually look at the 3D part. They come in, they zoom out. This is eDrawings Professional. So all the functionality that you have in there, being able to measure, put notes on there if you really wanted to, don't put notes on there. Um, but being able to measure, being able to you know hide things if they really needed to. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is one of the things that used to drive me up the wall is uh, someone would stop their job of putting stuff together they would walk across the parking lot, come up three flights of stairs, come to my desk and say, hey, I need a print. And then I turn around. And I'm like, OK, well, give me a sec. Well, I, I know that I need to save whatever I'm working on, close it down, wait, you know, wait for it to close out, open up their stuff, however long that takes. And then I can print them a drawing and then I can finally close that down and reopen what I had. That's a big disjoint in your design cycle. And that can cause a lot of problems on top of the fact that, you know, this whole process might have taken 20, 25, 30 minutes of time. Well, you know, if they have access to, you know, even a low end computer with pro E or not pro E, I did not say that E drawings in there, um, you know, they can actually come in, do a right click and hit print and they can print out the actual physical drawing as well, too. So you kind of put the power in their hands, the ability to look into things, to be able to the, the ability to rotate stuff, stuff around, the be able the ability to zoom in, and finally the ability to print if they really need to print there. So let's go ahead and uh, finish out what I need to do here. My main thing that I need to do is I need to right click on the main file and I am going to do a big check in. Now this is the first time I've checked this part in, or no, it's not the first time. <laughs> so I'm going to check in the main assembly. And this is one of the other things that kind of comes into play as well, too, is um, we are making copies of the files. We are keeping history uh, with us checking in again over another file. We're not just updating the file, but we're actually adding a secondary version on top of it in the same place. You as a user doesn't see it. You see it as the file. But you can also see here that we're not checking in, even though I'm checking in the main assembly, we're not checking in everything. We're only checking in the files that were adjusted. So in this case, it was the leg, the assembly, the table, all that stuff here. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, adjusted leg length. 
course I would say leg leg. So we're going to go ahead and put adjusted leg length. We're going to go ahead and check that in. So it's going to go through and it's going to send that information up to the server. And if anybody else had that large assembly open or maybe one of the sub assemblies and they were using that piece too, on their screen, on that right hand side of SolidWorks, they would get a new little symbol. It'd be a little red symbol saying, hey, there's something newer on the network. And as far as the user's concerned, if they want to see what it is, they right click on it, say get, and instantaneously is updated in the assembly that they're working on or they're drawing or whatever it may be. So there's no saving, no closing, no reopening, no nothing like that. That's going to take a long time. It's a simple right click that happens there. Now, what I want to do here is we're talking about revisions. We're talking about uh, processes and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, let's kind of show you here. I'm going to bring up the admin tool. And uh, let's go ahead and get in and take a look at what we are looking at as a workflow. So for us, we have a CAD workflow. And it's actually a pretty straightforward one. Uh, it comes into design. And you can see that at the top. And then it goes to review, and then it goes to release. And these are the stages in my engineering process. We also have these little loops here. So if I take it to design and send it to review and something's not right, I can bring it back here. Now, really what the workflow does, it doesn't just do revisions. It actually controls access to the file. Who can see what, when, who can do what, when, all that good stuff. Um, on top of the fact, we have these transitions that move it from one state to another state. These transitions are really nice because these are basically workhorses of the PDM system. We can make this do a couple of different things. We can make it, um, uh, we can make it stamp it with a revision. Uh, we can make it print out something. We can make it make a PDF. We can make it send a notification. We can, we can do all kinds of things. So um, really that's kind of the benefit of the system here is it kind of takes the treasury out. Uh, I remember when I first started with SolidWorks, you know, one of the things that we did was if I had to release 10 drawings, I had to open up each drawing. I had to put the name in, who approved it, who drew it, put the date in, um, and then I had to go through and change the revision number and make sure everything was good, and then I could finally save it and do the final print, but that was work I had to do for every single print that was released. Well, the nice thing about the workflow is you just tell the workflow to do that. You, as a user, just simply right-click and say, hey, I'm moving this on, and it will go ahead and take care of the rest of the work, and that's that automation I was talking about. Now, I have a couple of different here, you know, changes. Uh, different couple workflows. These are not something that you're stuck with. This We make this suit what you guys do. Uh, and, and, and here, what I have, I have an InDesign. It goes to an internal approval. Uh, one of the ones that I used out there, especially when we're doing custom machines, is a customer approval. And I can't tell you the number of times that you go through and you print out this big packet of stuff. You send it over to the customer. Customer's taking a look at it. You get it back. They've approved it. But then you find out that someone, for some reason, in the background, made a bunch of changes. And it's like, well, that's not what the customer approved. Um, so, you know, during the customer approval stage, I've got all the files locked out. No one can check those files out. If they need to make changes, they can push it, but their name is going to go on it. So no longer will people be able to get in and make changes and not have to document it correctly. Um, so in a case like this, we go from design to an internal approval. We have loopbacks to get it back so that if I need to make changes, I can set it back there. But like I said, all this stuff is being captured with history. And then we finally get it released to the floor. Um, once we get that final customer approval. And then we've got a couple of loops here. Is there a rework that needs to happen? Um, even in certain cases, I have customers that will actually add in any and all processes to the workflow. And then what they can do is they can finally say it's been shipped. And then at that ship state, it will say, hey, this files have been shipped or this part has been shipped. And I don't have to look at anything. I don't have to go talk to the guys on the floor. I don't have to talk to the, the project manager. I can just look in the system. And if I see it says ship right here, I know it's all shipped. It's all done. I can move on with my life. Now, this is pretty convoluted in certain cases. Um, we do have other ones. Working it. They're over it. They're done with it. And then if they need to make changes, they can send it to needs more working. You know, it, you don't have to have something complicated. And that's one of the pre uh, misconceptions that I, I run into is they think this is going to comp you know complicate their life. Look, man, we're only here to make it do what you need it to do. Um, you know, where I have made it more complicated is because the man the engineering manager has pulled me to the side and said, hey, we're having problems with this. So I need to make sure that these people follow these steps. And with that being 
the the game, well, that's fine. And then that way, when someone complains, you know, the engineering manager will usually shrug their shoulders like, well, that's kind of how it works, you know. And so they use this as an excuse to get their own department to uh, work a little bit better. You know, with that being said, workflows are not meant to slow you down. They're meant for a little bit of organization. They're meant to push it through. And once again, it can be as convoluted as you want it or it can be as simple as you want it. And it's really up to you to kind of make that good decision. Don't go simple just because it thinks it's less steps. Go simple because that's how you guys work. All right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move this through the system. So right now everything is in the design state. Um, we're going to go ahead and right click on it. We say change state to uh, send to review. And it's going to go ahead and send that over to review. That's that next stage. We're going to go ahead and move everything. Uh, I am going to type in here everything. Let's see. Ready for review. And we can hit OK. And I don't have any notifications set up, but if there was notifications, there would be emails going out to uh, whoever needs to review this at this time. I could pick it from a list. There's all different ways that we could set this up. And we can see that all the files are in review now. We're going to kind of wait for the computer to catch up here. And then uh, last thing we'll need to do is I'll go ahead and do a right click and we will uh, change that state and we will do the final ECRs complete. Um, so I don't need to go back and make changes. I'm going to go back to ECR complete and we're going to let this finish up here. It's going to ask me, oh, done. All right. So we send it on its way and then we can kind of go through there. So the cool part is, is right now, what we have that step that right click that I just did it is now going through all the files and it is actually revising them so even if you don't use a revision scheme most of the time I see people they're like yeah when it gets shipped it's put at rev a you can make that revision happen anytime however it's supposed to happen it's pretty easy to set up uh, as far as what's going on there. So this is going to take just a little bit of time there. So while that's going through, let's answer a couple questions. Um, I, we had an anonymous, anonymous, anonymous attendee. It says, how do you keep the workflow separate between CAD workflow and ETO? Um, that's really a specification set up with inside of it. There's some properties of the workflow, and we can say that certain file types are uh you know, go into particular workflows. Like I might want my uh, Excel spreadsheets to all be in a particular workflow. Um, it could be location as well too. Anything in this folder goes into this particular workflow. Um, in my case, I do not have all three of these active. In fact, I told the other things to look for file types that don't exist. Um, and it was more just to kind of show you guys, but it is pretty straightforward to get it so that it moves different things through different uh, workflows. In fact, uh, one of the ones is there's a physical state that says, transfer to another workflow uh, and that's something that we're going to take a look at here briefly all right so this should be finishing up here we'll give it just a few more seconds uh, the other one was uh, we had a question from Ivan uh, when discussing designs for products do you discuss DFM, DFM at a business level um, uh, not sure on that. I think I need a little bit more clarification on what you're looking for there. Uh, I know it's designed for manufacturing. Um, and I, I know from my own experience, we actually had our manufacturing group in with the, uh, in the PDM system. They were actually part of the workflow. So before something got officially released, we would actually get them involved. They could take a quick look at it and then say, make any changes. Maybe wells were too big, bends were too small or something like that. So, um, you know, it, it depends on when you want to put that in, but that can be actually be incorporated into a workflow uh, at that point. All right, so I got everything there. Everything is released. Uh, one thing I want to kind of point out here was if I look down at these drawings, um, you know, we're going to use that preview window. And the nice thing is, is if I take a look at the corner, we can see that this is actually set up at Rev A at this point in time. If I were to run this through the whole release system, it would then put it into Rev B. Notice I don't have the files checked out. If I go ahead and just double click on the file to open it up in SolidWorks, and we'll give this just a second here to go through and do that. So it's asking me if I want to check out the file. I do not want to check it out. And we'll go ahead and grab that. And we can see here that Rev A was put in there. And one thing to know is even if the files don't have the correct file properties, 
if I take a look at these custom properties, none of this information was actually here previously. So uh, this is stuff that I have the system automatically putting in. And that's kind of the nice part is that even if you have older files that you're trying to bring into the CAD system, sometimes the prep on those are a little bit frustrating. But the, honestly, the cool part is, is the PDM system can help bring those other files in at that time. So, um, you know, like I said, it went through. It filled out the names because this is how I, you know, told to do its work. It put in the correct, you know, revision level. It is going to capture all this. So, you know, I go back and people are like, oh, we don't have time for workflows. But it literally did that. And if I had a hundred drawings in there, it would have gone through and done that to all the drawings. In this particular case, I only have two drawings out there. So, so once again, you know, I, we come in, we start talking about workflows. People say, oh my God, there's going to be more steps in my job. Hold on, man. We're actually going to remove a lot of stuff from your job. We may get a lot of stuff that used to take you a couple minutes to do down to a single right click and you just kind of kick back and wait for your computer to catch up or your server to catch up or whatever it may be. All right. So definitely keep that in mind. So, you know, as I was talking earlier, let's go ahead and take one last look here. I'm going to take a look at this particular drawing. I'm going to right click on it and I am going to look at the history of it. And this is one of those things that's really nice. Um, we have a lot of cases where things, uh, things happen magically in our world. Uh, drawings disappear, they get changed, they, uh, uh, they're manipulated, their names are changed, whatever it may be. Really what it comes down to is everything's being captured here with history and we can see everything from the second that it was put into the system and then what happened. So initial transition to design, state was changed automatically, checked in, uh, says who did it. And it says what day they did it, what time they did it. I put notes in here for comments because if someone looks at the history, I don't want them to see my name and go, well, what the heck is Ryan doing? If I made a change for a reason, I fill out the comments. In fact, the cool part is, is uh, if people don't fill out the comments and I happen to be running the PDM system, there's a nice little checkbox on the admin side that says that it's required that people have to uh, actually put that in. So, um, you know, Kai, I feel comments are important enough to make people do it. And, and when you turn that little switch on, it works for about a half day before people start coming to you going, you got to turn that thing off. And I'm like, okay, as long as you guys start putting comments and I'll turn it off. So, you know, we can see what's going on through here. We can see what it's gone through, seeing the different revisions, seeing all kinds of good stuff. The other thing that we can take a look at here as well, too, is if I go down to say the drawing of the part of, of the leg here, you know, I can see that's at 21 inches. If I go ahead and click that and then go to actions, I can say get version and I can look at one of the older versions. So what did this look like when I first brought it in? Well, it's going to go back in time and it's going to pull up the older leg that was at 11 inches. We can see that it's not stamped A anymore or anything like that. And then once again, if I do a right click on it and say, hey, you know what, go ahead and just get me the latest here. It's going to go ahead and reload that data. Like I said, it's looking at the history of items and components, and it's going to see that now it's 21 inches, and my revision is in there, and it's got all the stamps on it. So, you know, for the main thing there, it's going to be, you know, the, a whole bunch of work just happened. And once again, I'll go back to the point that... Yes, you're doing extra clicks here and there and stuff like that, but we're also removing a ton of work that you used to have to manually do. Or if you were really lucky, you had some poor high school student that was doing an internship and they got to do the coffee and all the menial work. So uh, that's really what we're trying to get away from. All right. So, um, you know, CYA. It works great for it. I've, I've got a couple stories where I, if it wasn't for the PDM system, I probably would have had my resume out, but the PDM system actually proved that uh, the, the, the system worked is really what it came down to. So, um, you know, I know you don't do revisions, but we all do revisions in some way, some form. And uh, when you say you don't have time, that's just crazy talk to me. And uh, we go into some deeper type names that are deeper conversation there. All right, last thing I want to show you guys here um, is the file management headaches. And, uh, you know, an apple a day won't actually help here. So um, 
but a spoonful of PDM will help the medicine go down. And I've got that song singing in my head from back when I was in school. All right. So um, customer data. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about that. I don't have anything to show you, but definitely give you some uh, food for thought there. Uh, we've got copy tree and uh, copy tree is a really, really useful tool uh, that we can get into. We've also have move tree as well too. These are, if you're familiar with pack and go, uh, it, it is very similar, but it works with the database and we'll show you what we mean by that. Uh, the other one is uh, you know, renaming and moving probably the biggest bane, especially when you do custom stuff, uh, you know, cause you'll start out with, uh, I'm going to make a bracket and then they, you make a bracket and so what do you call it you call it bracket but you've been burned by this before so you call it bracket one and then you might you know do some changes to it ends up being a real part now you have to change the name of it and sal goes hey i was looking for bracket one i can't find it anymore do you want to find it for me or you do the long convoluted uh using solidworks explorer i'm putting air quotes up i don't have my camera on but i am doing air quotes solidworks explorer um you know it, it you could do a rename function in there and then make it update the assemblies. It was redonkulous. So, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. Um, one thing to know is customer data is always going to be a headache. Uh, I put DOA in there because nine times out of 10, they send you data. You start designing to the data and literally the next day they're like, oh yeah, it's changed. And you're like, oh great, that's that's awesome because I've got a bunch of tooling. And so they send you this new file, and um, I, I I don't know how many of you've been in the same like when I did automated uh, machinery for plastics, uh, I'd get an A pillar from Ford. I'd have to put it on there. Next day they have a new A pillar. I'd get that, try to finagle it in. I've got my nestings blowing up, my toolings blowing up. I got parts all over the place. I got red marks all over my assembly. Um, I now taken up a new habit of drinking out in the alley and behind the building. You know, it just gets it's ugly and stuff like that. Well, it, that part doesn't get any better, but managing it does. And one of the other things that we've run into is, you know, that one missed email where you designed to something, they sent you another email, but because they're sending 400 emails a day, you missed the one where they gave you the updated data and you never caught the fact that the part had changed. And then, so you release the machine, they give you the part, it doesn't fit. And then a bunch of fingers start getting pointed around. The fact of the matter is, is that you can start controlling this. You can give them their own workflow. When a part comes in from a customer, you can put it in a particular directory in your project or wherever it may be on, on your PDM system, and you can start controlling it. The nice thing is, is you can start keeping a history of it as well, too. So when you put a part, their first part into the PDM system, you check it in. Now it's part of the PDM system. Uh, the second part comes in, and you're like, oh, what do I do with this? It's got the same name. So what do we usually do? Uh, we put We append it with the date that we received it or something like that. Well, no longer need to do that. Even if it has the same name, I just check out the old part, take the new file, copy it in. SolidWorks is going to be like, hey, you're copying this over the old one. Are you sure you want to do this? Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you check that in. The cool part is every time you check in, you're getting a history bump. And so even though the parts may be completely different, the PDM still is still allowing you to use that same name, but stack those on top of each other. And you could go backwards and forwards in time. In fact, you could go backwards and forwards in your assembly to show what the assembly used to look like with the old part and what the assembly looks like with the new part as well too. So there's lots of functionality there, especially when you're dealing with that customer data. The big thing I want to talk about here though is it is going to be the uh, copy tree. So um, it comes into play that you need to make a change. Um, and so one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to do this first and foremost. Uh, these parts right here are standardized parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push them out of my design uh, my design workflow and I'm going to push them into a different workflow where I don't have to worry about them. So these are going to be standardized. I'd probably do these with customer parts as well too. Uh, but I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to change the state. Oof. We're going to just send them to ECR approved here real quick. It's going to grab not only the assemblies but the parts in them so I don't have to go looking in this list for them. And uh, I will say change... Uh, to standard components. Hey, look, I spelt it right and everything. All right, we'll hit OK on that. So what we'll see here is they go from, you know, release to design, 
And then I'm going to do one last here. We're going to change that state, and we are going to put a standard part in there. We're going to show you why I'm doing this here in a second, and uh, we won't put any comments in there. But now we'll see that they actually are listed as standardized components. So this is going to be important here in a second. So fact of the matter is I have a new project that's based off of an older project. I could do a big copy, paste it into the new one, but usually what we're dealing with is you know there might be a project number or the name system or something's going on here. And really what I want to do is I want to change a whole bunch of stuff really quick and take care of it. So I'm going to do a right click on the first part. Nope, sorry, on the main assembly. Uh, I'm going to go to tools and then I'm going to come in here and we have something called a copy tree. This is just like the pack and go. In fact, if you're familiar with pack and go, you're going to see that the window is kind of familiar. It's not exactly, um, but yeah, it's kind of close. In fact, you know what? Let's set up for this new project first. Um, I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to say new, and I'm going to run a. Uh, I'm going to run a task inside of. Um, sorry, I'm going to run a template inside of the PDM system. I'm going to say that I have a new project, and we're going to say for. Uh, uh, let's see. This is going to be, project number is going to be, we'll just say 2020-888. And the project name is going to be for Mikey. There we go. So we'll go ahead and say OK to that. Now, what did that do? Well, this is actually what it did. If I go back to the top of my PDM system here, I go into projects. It's created a new project called 2020-888. If I click on that, it actually has its own data card and we can see that the information is there. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the 2020-888 and it's got all my files set up automatically. And then I'm gonna go into the CAD folder and we're gonna see that there's nothing in there at this time. So those templates are really good for you guys, especially if you're working in a project base. Um, we've had it so that you set up a template, it makes this file directory for your project and then it might even have some documentation in there. It's got Word files and Excel files that are set up. It's got information actually being populated in it as well too. Um, so really what we're trying to do is instead of you copying, pasting, and grabbing this file and renaming it, putting it here, doing that, it's just a simple right click. And once again, I'm going back to the fact that it seems like there's more work in here, but when it's integrated nicely, it actually does a bunch of work for you. So kind of want to show that there. Um, I'm going to go back to the file and we're going to show you that copy tree here. So let me go into projects, ETO, to CAD, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick on that first one here. Uh, we're going to go to tools, we're going to do the copy tree. And uh, one thing that I want to do is I want to rename everything. I don't want the ADA in there anymore. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to say uh, replace, and I'm going to tell it to look for ADA, and we're going to replace it with 2020-888 just so it has the project number on there if that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that and we're going to see that it actually captures everything that had the ADA on it and it is renaming it to the new file over here. We can see now the ADA has been replaced with the 2020-888 or 888. Uh, the only other thing I need to do is I do need to browse to the new location. So that's why I created the project first. We'll go back to projects. We'll look for 2020-888. There we go. And we'll go to the CAD folder. And this is what we're going to do. We're just going to tell it to land there. But I'm not going to hit OK. And the reason being is that I am going to do one last thing here which is I'm going to take a look at the states and make sure that we don't grab those standard parts. Looks pretty good there. There it is. So I don't want these coming along for the ride. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck these. And now it's only going to copy the files that need to be copied and the standard ones will stay where they are at currently. So um, I'm also going to check in on copy as well too. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that and then uh, we'll hit copy. So we're going to sit back here. This may take a couple seconds, but uh, we'll let it go through. So it is taking all the parts. It's taking them, copying over, just like the Pack and Go does. But the main thing here, though, is we're also resetting the database numbers on any of the new parts. So they aren't going to be at Rev A anymore. They'll be at Rev 0 until I release them the first time. So once again, I don't have to go in and try to make corrections or forget to make the corrections or updates or adjustments as needed. This is going to take care of it all for me at this time.
All right. So um, while that's doing its work here, let's take a look at what we had on our list. So customer data, the fact of the matter is this actually makes it easier. I don't rev control customer data, but I do use the PDM's ability to keep history in there. I can put notes in there. I can do all kinds of stuff in the comments. All right. Copy tree. We're running through that right now. We'll let it get done. Uh, last thing we'll do is we'll show you the whole renaming or moving and why that could be important as well, too. Um, what I love about the renaming and moving inside of SolidWorks is you just rename it or you move it uh, or rename and move it. It doesn't matter. There's no extra steps that you have to go through. Uh, and, and if you've ever renamed or moved a component in an assembly, most of you guys are probably familiar with the fact that you would go to open the assembly. It would throw a, bunch, a big hissy fit saying, I can't find the file. You know, do you want to find it for me? And if you renamed it and you moved it, it's usually not a big deal. But what if your coworker renamed it or moved it? And now you got to figure out, well, first off, you got to figure out which coworker to talk to. Second off, uh, they may not be there anymore. Who knows, right? So once again, this is just kind of finishing out there. Um, Ivan, you had uh, on the design for manufacturing, uh, making sure that the manufacturing team is in communication with the design team to ensure that it meets specs for production before being rolled out for type uh, prototyping. I, I'm a big proponent of uh, you know having manufacturing involved, even if they're internal uh, vendor, if it's an internal manufacturing group, even to the point that uh, I've worked at places where our external manufacturing group actually were part of the process. Uh, we would send it out. They knew exactly when things came in, how things worked out uh, and all that good stuff. So, you know, it's definitely easy to integrate them in. Sometimes you might have to buy them some licenses, uh, but you're usually in control of that. We do have some ways, especially if you go with PDM professional, there are some uh, external ways that people can get into the system here. So uh, definitely a good way to go. All right, so let's uh, take a look here. We finished up, go to projects, 2020-888, and go to CAD, and we can see here that all the files have not only been copied over, but if I take a look at them here, uh, let's look for one of those drawings. There's a drawing somewhere. Oh, make sure you check the box to copy the drawings over. Ryan did awesome on that one. All right, so um, I can't show you the drawings because I did not click the button. I apologize for that, guys. Uh, there is a checkbox in there, just like in, in, in the uh, pack and go. There is a little checkbox uh, to make sure that you copy the drawings over. The main thing I wanted to show you, though, here is this. Is I'm going to go ahead and go to the top level of my PDM system. I'm gonna say new folder. I'm gonna call the standards because this is where I wanna start sending all my uh, standard componentry to. And I'm gonna go through and grab these files that I need to. So I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna grab this one. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to do some docking here. There we go. We dock that there. We dock that there. So I'm going to grab these files and I'm going to simply drag and drop them into the standards folder. And if you don't have a PDM system, basically this would break your assembly at this time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close that window down. We can see they're in the standards. They are no longer over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just double click on that and we'll let that. It's going to take about a minute or so to open that up. Uh, I do not want to check out anything here. And we'll just let that open it up. What I would expect is without a PDM system, at some point, SolidWorks is going to pop up and go, hey, I can't find this file. But we'll let this go in the background uh, while we talk about some other things here. Um, all right, so never get heartburn. We're showing that right now to you guys. And uh, let's kind of, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to, uh, you know, multi-user environment, you know, it's better than yelling at people, not knowing who has what open, opening things in a particular way. I've had companies say, oh, we open everything read only and only you know reload things that we want. Uh, it just the PDM handles it. You don't have to do it anymore. You know exactly who's working on it. You know exactly who to talk to if you need anything to do with it. And if someone updates it, you are getting feedback inside of the PDM system, inside SolidWorks, knowing that things are being updated for you on the fly out there. So definitely a good way to go. 
Um, the other things that we have there, the workflow. This is one of the things, like I said, it shuts down communications all the time. Uh, you know, they call us up. We're having these kinds of problems. What do you have that's available? We come in. We call it. You know, we tell them it's a PDM system that will help you. And uh, you know, and they hear PDM and they're like, okay. And then I say, oh, we have workflows. Well, they've done their homework. And they, well, we saw the workflows. We don't do revisions. I don't think that's what for us. Hold on. There's always a workflow, and all we do is we just get it integrated to the way that you want it to work. In fact, I tell a lot of my customers that once we're done with the implementation, if it's not working the way that you thought it should, you need to get a hold of us. Um, we teach you how to make changes, but if you don't know how to make it work correctly, then get a hold of us, and we'll show you how to get it to work, and then you'll learn something new that day as well, too. Last but not least is that file management, and uh, ultimately, there it is. Ultimately, the file opened up. I don't have any trickery here. I don't have it shutting down messages. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is the little caps, and that's what it was, is the caps on my uh, 8020 start, 8020 here. Um, it knows exactly what happened to it. It knows exactly where it's at. It didn't even question the fact. In fact, I could go in there and rename it, and it's still not going to question the fact that I renamed it, and I moved it, and I did all kinds of things to it. So um, ultimately, the PDM system, if I kind of take it down, just helps you. Uh, it, it's not meant to add an extra layer. It's meant to help you. It's meant to do things that you do regularly. Uh, the best example I have is I have a uh, custom machine company that they do large scale assembly lines for the automotive sector. When they release a project, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of drawings being released. Um, one thing that we didn't see here, and it happened in the background, is there is a new folder in here called PDFs. And if I look at the PDF folder here, basically when I released it, not only did it change the name and update the drawing, but it went through and created a PDF automatically. So this customer that I have, one group internally to the company gets a set of PDFs. It's put in a particular folder on the network outside of the PDM system. Another group gets a set of DWGs of all the drawings, and that's put in a different network location in their system and outside of the PDM system on top of that. And then they actually have a little checkbox in their data card that says if the part is manufactured internally and if that checkbox has been checked in the data card that those parts are saved as step files and then put into the cam directory for the machine guys this used to be something that they would give the newest guy in the company to do it usually took anywhere from three to five days to go through every single drawing open it up do this do that do this put it here put it here put it here Basically, what they did was they bought a license for the server. And what happens is when they finish a job, the server will then go in, open up the files, do the save as, put them where they need to go, and then send it on its way. It still takes a couple of days to do it, but it's the server doing it. So as soon as an engineer finishes their job, they're done. All the extraneous work that used to take days, not just hours, days, is now being handled by the server at that time. So that's going to be a huge time savings, and that's one of the things that we're always looking for. We're not looking to you know, get some money out of you just because we want another product in your you know, house. We're looking for you to actually get some money, and that's why there's real-world ROIs with what we do with the PDM system there. All right, this should be done at this point, but if I come in, this is the part in question. Uh, if I do a right click on it, uh, if I go ahead and do a right click on it and go to properties, we can see that it is actually in the standards. And once again, it never asked me, it never knew, it doesn't even care. The PDM saw me do it, the PDM force fed that bit data back to the assembly. So cool part is you can rename and move anything you want once it's in the PDM system. It works great that way. All right. That's all I have. I do appreciate your time. I went over a couple minutes more than I wanted to. I do apologize, but thanks for sticking around. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to shoot them over to me. My email address is right here, ryan.cole at goengineer.com. Um, and then uh, uh, the we have an anonymous attendee talking about SOLIDWORKS versus draft site converting to PDF. Um, I, I mean, if it's coming from SOLIDWORKS, I'm not going to save it out to a draft site file to have that converted to PDF. But um, if you want draft site to save as PDF, I think you have to have draft site pro. Draft site on its own may not do it automatically. So hopefully that answers that question. But if it doesn't, feel free to shoot me an email. I'd be more than happy to help you with that.